on the holes in my shoes. I stick my tongue in the holes in my teeth. I stick expletives in the holes in my thought process when I speak. My friends stick to their guns, they got a bunch in the woods of Vermont till the end time come. But Saturn says he's gonna learn to live as if the world gonna do my best to drink coffee in the morning and live as if I didn't feel lonely and hopeless and helpless to save myself for the world where I live and tonight when I dream it will be that the junkies spent all the drug money on community gardens and collective housing and the fuck kids who moved in the Started filling potholes, collecting garbage to prove we don't need governance to do these things. And I'll wake up burning Times Square as we sing. Throw your hands in the air, property is robbery.
Snappy, thank you for the resub. 11 fucking months, Jesus. Nonsense, thanks for the raid. I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah. It's one of my favorite albums. Um, That's Pat the Bunny. That's Patrick Sneevice. Um, Fellow Vermonter. Fellow Anarchist. Uh, fellow Journeyman. Yeah. I'm in a weird mood. I'm in a weird place. You ever get so angry you get sad? I've sort of circled around. Um, I, I was, I was livid for a good portion of the day. Um, and I just went out for a walk and came back and I'm just like, now I'm just sort of depressed. I was listening to punk music on my way around the neighborhood. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I was kicking around an idea for an essay. Um, and... Yeah, Cassidy. Yeah, I can't imagine why. I was kicking around an idea for an essay. Um, after reading that Adam Gopnik thing um, earlier today, I need to do a thing attacking liberals. Um, I've never written an essay that explicitly attacks liberals. I need to write an essay that attacks liberals. Um... They need to be put in their fucking place, apparently. Because when I saw that shit, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I put the quote in the commons a while back. The liberation of women, the emancipation of slaves, and then of the racially oppressed, the recognition of the rights of sexual minorities. These are all the unique achievements of liberal states engineered by liberal activists, all things that have never happened before in history. Yeah. Yeah, such big brain moves that they didn't even do anything. Um. Yeah, literally. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have reduced exactly. Just yeah, touch JPEG. Um, yeah, I was, I was all kinds of like, oh, by the way, um, I just want to state this unequivocally on air for, re for the record, Dylan Burns is the worst kind of lip. Dylan Burns can go fuck himself. Yeah. I just want to state that unequivocally. I'm not going to get into anything. I'm not going to do a huge rant. I just want that on the record that I personally, Kai of Proudly Radical, do believe that Dylan Burns and people like Dylan Burns are the reason that the world sucks. There we go. There we go. Just, I just wanted that on the record, just, just so we know. Because, you know, after he spent last night his stream last night defending a serial rapist and shitting on the anti-work movement, he, of course, retracted his statements supporting said serial rapist today, right? No. Today, he was, ma he was just watching some YouTube videos and making fun of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Dylan Burns apparently likes just, apparently Dylan Burns likes to accuse people of sexual harassment without any evidence, but when it comes to actual serial rapists, Dylan Burns supports them. So Dylan Burns defends serial rapists. Dylan Burns is on the side of serial rapists. So I just wanted that out there that I do personally believe Dylan Burns is the worst kind of human being. Yeah. 
Well, we should give the benefit of the doubt to the serial rapist who tanked an entire movement. Hmm. Yes. Yes. So, anyway, moving on to something more productive. Yeah, vile. Vile. And apparently never apologizes for any of his missteps either. Oh, he still owes apologies to people he has accused th uh, of things with absolutely no evidence. Has accused people of things with absolutely no evidence and refuses to retract said statements and refuses to apologize to those people. But in the face of, a, of evidence of somebody admitting that they're a serial rapist, he gives them the benefit of the doubt and defends them because that person was responsible for basically destroying a um, a movement that neolibs don't agree with because neolibs are the worst kind of people because at least the Nazis are just evil, right? Like we get that. Nazis are evil. They're horrible, horrible fucking people. The liberals accommodate them. The liberals facilitate them. The liberals provide political cover for them. Martin Luther King Jr. called this out. Yeah, they pander to evil. It is historically true. It is contemporarily true. It is, they are the worst kind of people. Um, Emma Goldman was right. Emma Goldman was right. MLK was right. But yeah, yeah. I just want, I just want to clear that up. I want to get that off my chest that people who defend admitted serial rapists, not people I like. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. I know this is. This is a hot take. I, Kai of Proudly Radical, do not approve of serial rapists. I don't even approve of one-time rapists. I personally believe if you are a sexual assaulter, that generally you're not a good person. Crazy, I know. See how difficult that was? Dylan, you see how difficult that was? Hmm. Um... Hold on, guys, though. Maybe we should give the benefit of the doubt to the serial rapist. Astounding. Astounding. And then his shitlib community, of course, agrees and then just shits on the labor movement. Because let's face it, as Bob Black was so prescient in pointing out, they don't actually want you to be free. They want you to work more. They want you further under the boot heel of the masters. They just want it with a different label. They just want it with different aesthetics. So, fuck the libs. <laughs> up a little hazzy um fuck the libs fuck the conservatives fuck the nationalists fuck the supremacists fuck all these authoritarian fucks fuck them all oh nonsense have you not seen seen ha has yeah that's that's has yeah, yeah, yeah here I'll, I'll kick him off again for you He's our channel pet now. Yeah. After I, uh, after I found out that he's like, you know, two inches tall, 
I just picked him up one day. I went over to California where he lives now and I picked him up and put him in my pocket and I brought him home with me. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I put him right in front of the, the, the camera lens. That's literally him. He's just running around the camera lens for me. Yeah. I told him it was, it was, it, that's how you achieve a dictatorship of the proletariat is you run around the camera lens a few times. And he was more than happy to. Yeah. Bark it. It's been a weird day. <laughs> uh, Glazy, the skirt meta is for summer. Because though the skirt pisses off like conservatives and shit like that, social conservatives, it was worn because it's comfortable to wear a skirt in the desert. That's why I wore one. That's why I started wearing one. It's not a statement. It's 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 a functional ch uh, clothing choice. So the skirt has been pulled from the the redemption list uh, until next summer. Um, so when, when it heats up again and I start wearing skirts around again, the skirt, the skirt redemption will be back. But until then, you know, um, yeah, exactly. Um, we may, um, no, no, uh, do not wear long socks. Um, oh, um, and Caleb, just because you're, you're new here and you've never seen it, we are probably degens around these parts, um, just so you know, <laughs> fucking, you'll hear a story or three eventually. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking about maybe doing, what, what am I getting? I'm getting tagged somewhere. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, caboose. Yeah. Fucking hang on. I made this. You made this? Radical changes in the world that drastically improve the living conditions of people. Radical conditions and uh, changes in the world that drastically improve the con uh, living conditions of people. I made this. Fucking liberals. Oh, I've got something. I've got a statement that I have kept near me for years and years and years. I'm gonna post it in chat in co uh, the comments on the server. If one of our meme lords or one of our graphic people or somebody who's feeling particularly artistically inspired wants to transform it into something, I would be right chuffed if it became something. I'll read it to you. A public message to the rulers of the world. We've had enough of your bullshit. Your food sucks, your music sucks, your religion suck, your economy sucks, your businesses suck, your education sucks, your legal system sucks, your healthcare system sucks, your foreign policy sucks, your domestic policy sucks, all your hierarchical systems suck. Nothing you have ever done is worthy of any respect. Everything beautiful, inspiring, and useful on this planet has been created by us. You are valueless, deceptive parasites, and it's time for a world without you. We've outgrown the need for leaders and rulers. Expect us. All of us. I've, I've kept that near me for more of the years than I probably would care to admit. So, yeah, it's the kind of mood I'm in today. Um, I'm kind of feeling gamey too. Kind of feeling gamey. Um, I don't know. Let me pull up. Let me just pull up that in the background so I have it so I can look at it. Uh, what's up, song? Uh, Amorous. I mean, if somebody was gonna play with me, I'd probably try. Holy shit, am I bad at that game though? Dude, I can't survive. Dude, I can't survive. I have yet to get a character past six hours. I'm not kidding you. Uh, it gave me like duck or deer. No. Um, dude, yeah, dude, Amorous. That game is fucking. Um, that fucking uh, game is fucking rough. Um. I don't know. 
Oh, is there any news that I want to cover? Is there? I was thinking about maybe doing some more Bob Black reading because I did upload that last segment. Um, to the shit place YouTube. Um, and so I I marked off the next section. I was thinking about maybe doing that because the one after that I really like, and I'd like to get to it one of these days. Vistress, thanks for the follow. Uh, no future for the workplace is a really good one. Mm, the best future for the workplace, as for the battlefield, is no future at all. Um, it's a it's a it's a great one. But there's one there's a there's a essay before it that I would like to work through if I'm going to actually slowly but surely make my way through Bob Black's abolish work. So I was thinking about doing that maybe. Um, I was gonna laugh at the right for a bit just because they're losing their fucking mind over like a Supreme Court pick that hasn't even occurred yet. But apparently like uh, fucking um, old fucker Carlson like lost his mind at the thought that it might be a black woman. Fucking going full mask off again. Good on you guys. Um, yeah, old fucker Carlson. I mean, if 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 somebody would just send him like a real doll of the green M and M, maybe he could fuck the 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 green M and M real doll, and he'd like you know be a little less uptight. Um, seems to be his type. Oh, um, do y'all see the direct action? <laughs> Look, we shouldn't we shouldn't encourage this sort of thing. Um, yeah, I know, right, Caboose? Um, do y'all see the fucking Texas, uh, brothers? The, the two brothers and the friend, the two brothers and the friend. Yeah. Two brothers and a friend in Texas. Um, fucking a, that's little, little direct action. Um, for those of you who don't know the story, um, fucking, Two brothers found out that their uh, um, their stepdad was diddling their uh, nine year old half sister, so they went and got their friend and they rode up onto him and beat him to death. Yeah, whoopsie. Um, they're gonna have trouble. It's it's in Texas. I mean, they're they're Latino. They they are Hispanic, but I think they're gonna. I I think. I think they're going to have trouble convening a jury in Texas that's going to be fucking fair on this one. I mean, the dad infamously, um, there was the case years ago of the the father who, um, like, whose uh, son, uh, his karate instructor, became a family friend and was on hard times, and they let him live with him. The f dad became best friends with him, like, for a time, and he found out that, uh, well, the fucking dude kidnapped his father fucking son and crossed state lines with him and eventually the cops caught up to him and on the way back they flew him into the airport and the dad was standing why is that the dad was standing at the pay phones and he just turns around and fucking pops the dude in the dome just one bullet pop fucking dead on uh, on impact and the uh, the texas jury just acquitted him they're like not guilty uh, yep. Why, Jerry? Why? Because fuck him. Why? That's why. Um, yeah, the Texas jury just acquitted that motherfucker. <laughs> like, out of here with that shit. We don't give a. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> so I, 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 I find that they may have difficulty convening a jury in Texas to convict these young boys. Um, yeah. I mean, they're fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Is what it is, right? Job done. I, 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 this is my, this is my deal when I explain this to people all the time. Oh, they're teenagers, Libra. They're fucking teenagers. I don't know, they're 17, 18. I don't fucking know. They're teenagers though. Um, yeah. Uh, this is, I mean, I explain to people all the time, like in an anarchist situation, we do restorative and reparative justice as a community. But a lot of this shit sorts itself out at the individual direct action level. This sort of thing. Like... They found out their stepdad was diddling their half-sister. Where's the stepdad? They beat him to death. What do you think? 
<laughs> what do you think happened to him? That fucker's cold. I, I, we can't encourage this as a society. Like, we can't be like, you know. Honestly, I'd give him a slap on the wrist. I'd be like, you know what? We're going to put you in juvenile detention for time served. Really? Yeah, we're letting them walk with time served. We'll put it on their record that, that like they had violent action in their past. And, you know, if they ever conduct themselves violently again, we'll we'll have it on the record and we'll be able to do something about it. But if this is a one off, yeah, it's going it's going on a juvenile record and we're giving them time served. Fuck it. What do you want? What do you want from me? We're, you know, we're not encouraging vigilanteism. Right? Like, we, we're giving them a criminal record. We're making sure that if this is a pattern, we can deal with it in the future. But as far as this case goes... I'm sorry, what? You say something? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, Caboose. All right? We just got to make... Yeah. Like, we just got to make sure that it's not a pattern. That's all. If this is a one-off, nine, Cassidy. The, si the sister was nine years of age. If this is a one-off, then who gives a shit? Seal the juvenile record and call it a day. Yeah, we just can't encourage vigilantism. That's all. Yeah, like that's 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 the whole point. We can't encourage it. So as a society, we have to do something to tell them don't do this. Right? Like this is we get it. Extenuating circumstances. Your sister was being diddled by your dad and shit happens. Like we get it. We get it. But don't make a habit of this. We will come down hard on you if you do. We have to like we have to draw that line in the sand. But yeah, I'd be like time served. Did you book them? You booked them? Time served. So, I mean, okay, we weren't really talking about Trudeau, we were kind of talking about, like, brothers in Texas who beat their diddling stepdad to death when they found out he was diddling their nine-year-old, but, you know, Trudeau, I guess. Um... Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this douchebag. Fucking what's name? What's this fucker's name? Mark Icker. Mark Icker. Fucking um, this motherfucker right here. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna fucking hang on. Fucking, cause this shit's all public record. This ain't Doxin. This here is Mark Icker. I C K uh, I C K E R. Mark Icker. Um, is a former Pennsylvania police officer who is um, serving a 15-year federal prison term for using his badge to force two different women to perform sexual acts um, to, you know, get out of trumped-up charges. So everybody say hi to Mick. Uh, uh, Mick. Uh, Mark Icker. Um... Everybody say hi to Mark. He's serving 15 years for raping two women under color of law. But here's the fun fact. Here's the fun fact. He's not going to be required to register as a sex offender when he gets out. Because, wait for it, he didn't plead guilty to any sexual offenses, only admitting to violating the civil rights of his victims. This is via... A ruling from the Third Circuit Court of Appeals in the U.S. So this man is a very real sexual predator who will not be forced to register as a sexual offender because all he actually did, as far as the courts are concerned, was abuse his authority as a police officer, not rape two women. Cassie, do those women have brothers? I don't know, but maybe we should ask Dylan Burns if we should defend him too while we're at it. Never gonna let that, never gonna let that drop. 
I will never forget that. Defending a fucking serial predator. Um, yes. Without a sex crime conviction, Iker cannot be legally required to register with state police as a sexual offender under the Sex, uh, sex Offender Registration and Notification Act. Judge Joseph A. Greenway Jr. concluded in the federal court's opinion. The circuit court ruling overturns the registration requirements that the middle district judge uh, Malachi E. Mannion imposed when he sentenced Icker. Investigators say Icker, now 31, was working as a police officer for Luzerne County in 2018-2019 when he, let's be, let's be generous, he coerced the victims into performing oral sex on him. Um, hey, but good news, good news, the victims were at least 22 and 32 years of age. They weren't children. Yes, Aspen, yes. The original, uh, the middle, original middle district judge who sentenced his punk ass put a condition of sex offender registry on him, and then, yes, his attorneys fought it. Yeah, this time. And while we're at it, while we're at it, Are we all familiar with the um, the Illinois State Police Trooper by the name of Antonio Alvarez and his very not lucky 31-year-old wife, um, mother of two, and pre-K teacher, Amanda Alvarez? Um, well, you know... He did what we know cops do. He shot her and then killed himself. It is extraordinarily dangerous to be married to a police officer. Or date one. Or be around one. Or no one in any capacity, really. Um, yes. FIFA, so he tried to balance a bad thing with a good one. Yeah, he just, unfortunately, he got him in the wrong order, Viva. Yeah. Yeah. Had he, had he, had he done the, the second one first, we probably wouldn't be talking about it. Fucking PEMDAS. <laughs> uh, at this point, a uniform is like those animals that evolve colors to warn their, their venomous. Um, fucking, yeah. Yeah, like the tree frog is a fucking uh, cop. Dear rulers, your food stinks. Not a day goes by that I don't remember how shit the food is. You've been a bane to the culinary world, destroying the dreams and potentials in our cooks, poisoning each dish with your power grabs. No... It is not enough for you to force down our throats the worst you can imagine in endless repetition, tossing it out when no one can afford to pay. Um, yeah, AJ, I feel you on that one. Uh, did I hear about the bounty hunters? Police in Phoenix, Arizona are investigating a botched bounty hunter raid at a home they surely didn't mean to hit. The armed team was apparently acting on an erroneous tip posted to their Facebook page. That sounds about right. Sounds about right for Arizona. Sounds about right for bounty hunters. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to fucking... What the... Wait, what? Jesus Christ. Fuck it. Uh, Glazy. 
I'm a white dude and the son of a judge, and even I can't say that. I've, I, I have had numerous very poor interactions with cops. And the only thing that drug my ass out of it was I was a white dude and the son of a judge. That's it. Otherwise, I'd have been fucked several times. Well, Drippy, um, I don't know where to start. Um, the system is rigged. It's always been rigged. Um, it was rigged long before you got on the scenes, a scene. It'll be rigged long after you leave the scene. The best you can do is fix the world around you in small ways with your own community and stop relying on any hierarchical authoritarian devices that otherwise are, um, providing, let's say, uh, brand cover for these sorts of shit situations. Buffet. Thank you for the gift sub, Buffet. Uh, congratulations, Peaky. But thank you, Buffet. Um, but if you have questions, uh, Drippy, feel free to ask. Um, but also understand that, um, hi, my name's Kai. I'm an anarchist. Um, I don't believe in, well, most of this shit. Um, so... <clears throat> Do I like game wardens? I mean, not really, no. Uh, um, I am was not familiar with that story, Buffet. Um, lab test monkey on the loose after cr truck crash in Pennsylvania. There's still one monkey unaccounted for. Okay. Run, monkey, run. Uh, facts. Apparently, they were be the these particular monkeys were used to test the COVID vaccine. Um. So, there you go. Do we all see the, okay, fucking Glazy, uh, not Glazy, sorry, Glazy, uh, fucking Viscous posted this earlier today, but with the, um, um, the New York Post, N the New York Post, okay, keep in mind, America, New York Post, of all fucking places, the New York Post posted this photo and said, this 52-year-old Ukrainian teacher purchased a hunting rifle and is prepared to defend Kiev, okay? Remember, New York Post unequivocally stated that this woman purchased a hunting rifle. Everybody, the hunting rifle. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, I think we all have a right to hunt as well. I think we, yeah, exactly. Aspen, fucking, I want that hunting rifle. That's a, that is, that is a fucking hell of a hunting rifle. Oh, uh, no, facts. It's fucking, dude, seriously, facts. Uh, the NFA, the National Firearms Act, basically makes these impossible to get on this side of the pond. But in Ukraine, trust me, you can get this kind of hardware. Um, oh, please, it's just an AR platform with a fucking suppressor on it. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's just, it's the fucking, uh, it, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a hell of a piece of kit, admittedly. Yeah, it's not, it's just a badass looking piece of gear because of the fucking, uh, the foregrip on it. Little bipod, little bipod, a suppressor. It's not full auto. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a nice piece of kit. But per per the New York Post, 
This is a hunting rifle. Okay? So, don't be pissed at me. Don't be pissed at me when I have hunting rifles. This bitch, this bitch gonna be the next Simo. <laughs> Oh, she got that look too. She got that look. She got she got that look. Dude, Slavic women don't fuck around. She's hunting bears. She's hunting bears. <laughs> yes, she is. Uh Actually, Che, you'd be surprised. Um fucking <laughs> that face went not Ukrainian sniper girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I want it on the record that in the opinion of the New York Post, that is a hunting rifle. Ukrainian, fuck, here we go. Ukrainian mom buys powerful hunting rifle, vows to fight for Kiev. Okay. Okay. So, I'm just saying. Next, next time we fucking have to put up with some, some shit from the New York Post. Fucking, hey, don't listen and fucking, you know, just a hunting rifle. Just a hunting rifle. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, it's what I hunt with. Just, just one of my hunting rifles. To, uh, here you go. Here you go. <clears throat> Just a three eight eight Barrett. Yeah. Uh, three three eight. Sorry, fucking. Yeah. Pff, fucking glazy, it's alright. I punch a fucking hole in your goddamn engine block. <laughs> it's alright. You know you'd fucking come in my hand if I gave that to you, glazy. Uh, let's see. I mean, you know, she's not my baby. Um, here's my baby. Baby, let me get you. I'll get you a picture of my baby. Here's my baby. I've shown people this one before. Get me off of it. Here's my baby. That's my choice. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's old now. Facts. It's fucking couple few decades old. Oh my there we go. 
Um, it's a Steyer 308 Scout. Yeah. <clears throat> In <laughs> Karina, it's fine. The barrel's longer than it looks due to the stock design. Um, I I can I can lob around pretty far with it. Close that, open that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I have, Karina, I have Deep Rock Galactic now, but it's not compatible with your version. The The Xbox version is, the Xbox Windows version is not compatible with the Steam version. Uh, no crossplay. Um, Don't ask me. It's not a limitation of the Xbox or the Windows system. It's a limitation of the game and the developers themselves. The developers straight up said the crossplay is not available. It's available for Xbox and Windows 10, but it's not available for fucking Steam and Windows 10 and or Xbox. So whatever the developer, whatever system the developers are using for their crossplay, uh, for their online system, it's basically no crossplay. Um, so. Uh, and Caleb, stuff like that goes in shared content. I know you were replying, but video links and stuff like that go in shared content. Um, yeah, yeah, Karina, I guess. Don't know. Um, let's see. We got another one, by the way. Fucking uh, Nashville. Uh, guy was walking down I-65 in Nashville, uh, and he was shot and killed by law enforcement officers. Um, I... He was sitting on a guardrail. Uh, the officer stopped to offer him a ride off the interstate, and after a brief conversation, the two walked towards the trooper's car. Metro police said then the man pushed away from the trooper, and uh, according to them, he had a box cutter in his hand. Um, and, well, they attempted to talk to the man, who was described as being agitated about something, um, and he made an abrupt motion with his right hand. Um... And they, they said he had a silver, shiny, cylindrical ob uh, object that was not a firearm in his right hand. But because of his quick movement, the group of nine police officers shot at him. Um, so... Uh... Uh... <laughs> the attacks, uh, it's, it's more than that. Uh, I gotta tell you, it's, yeah, of course it's bullshit, Che. It's fucking cops. Cops. What's up, Dongler? Donger? Dongler? Um, fucking, who am I talking to? Theo. Um, it's been a long day and a late stream, so, um, let me just put it this way. Anarchism is a, a philosophical lens of analysis. It's a series of ideological tools. It's a network of ideas, and in the words of Emma Goldman, we much prefer it that way. It's not a, a monolithic philosophy, but utilizing these sort of meta-ethical analysis techniques, utilizing these philosophical uh, underpinnings, and utilizing these ideological beliefs, um, what we do is sort of analyze various structures, systems, organizations, and uh, organizational modalities of operation, as it were, and that leads us to certain conclusions individually and as a milieu or as a community. One of them is that the state, you used government, I'm going to use the state, um, that the state has an uh, unjustified claim to authority based off of uh, coercive elements and a monopolization of force. Therefore, it fails to clear our hurdle of justification or uh, meet that, that uh, demand for justification of authority. And therefore, we advocate for the removal of it. But it goes beyond that. It's not just government bad, right? We're not just anti-statists. That's not 
where it comes from. That's like an that's like a right wing thing where they're just like government bad, and that's all they got, right? Ours is based off of a tradition, a deep understanding of various philosophies, various ideologies. Um, we are fundamentally classified under idealist philosophy. Um, that leads us to deconstruct a whole host of hierarchical authority, authoritative systems. Um, organized religion would fall under that. The state would fall under that. Capitalism would fall under that. Um, so there's there's a variety of things beyond just government bad. Um, so there you go. There's there's sort of there's the elevator pitch version of it. Um, forgive me, I'm not very high energy tonight. Um, but I hope you're well nonetheless. They definitely cuff the corpse. Oh, they always do. That is the craziest shit to watch when when cops fucking cuff the corpse. Um, yeah, hey, you're welcome, AJ. Um, yeah, when the cops cuff the corpse, dude, that's always a fucking look. Uh, because capitalism is inherently coercive, it is inherently hierarchical. It is inherently a violence inflicted upon the people in the forge, uh, in the form of a wage, uh, a well, we would call it wage slavery. Well, we wouldn't even call it wage slavery, by the way. Uh, when mercantilism converted to capitalism um, back in the in the days of like early Europe and settling in America, uh, in America, um, the uh, the populace at the time deemed capitalism um, and the mechanism that people under operate under it wage slavery. That's not a recent term. People have been calling um, wage jobs wage slavery since the inception of capitalism. But due to these coercive elements that are founded upon violence, and if you're like, well, where's the violence? Okay, so here's my example. If you don't pay your fucking bills, what happens? No food, no house, no health care. And if you attempt to do anything to prevent the state from removing your possessions from your personal, uh, from from your person, uh, what will happen? They will send the police, the maintainers of the status quo, who will utilize the monop monopolization of force that the state has to maintain that status quo, remove your personal possessions, and any refusal thereof will be met with violence. So capitalism inherently utilizes the statist apparatus of violence or their monopolization of violence in a coercive manner to operate, and always has. Um, so. There you go. Um, what if? What if? This is crazy. No, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Did you just say we should have universal health care? But you just turned yourself into a hypocrite. Your previous statement disqualifies your following statement. Your primary statement is that you're not entitled to anybody's labor, but you are utilizing the collectivized labor in the form of tax base to fund that system. You are finding yourself to be entitled to other people's labor. Now, see, I have a completely different lens of analysis for this, but you yourself just stepped right into a bear trap for yourself. Like, you, you, you literally set out a fucking bear trap on the ground and then fucking walked right through it. Like, I don't understand what you're attempting to do now because you've created a scenario in which... You're violating, I mean, that was like. Ah, okay. So this is, this is always my, my favorite. Um, what if everybody's willing? What if I can show you a distributed topology in which everyone, everyone uh, participating is of free association and mutually involved that lacks an element of coercion. That's not an entitlement then. That's not a theft of labor. That's a participation in a system. Oh, 
Oh, anyway. I'm concerned about I'm so I don't believe anyway. Uh, I don't believe we can accomplish it. Checker squares. Um, fair, fair checkers. Um, uh, I, I'm going to call you checkers, even though it's checkers squares. I'm just going to pluralize your name. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. Um, checker. I, I completely get that. Um, and also like, there's a thing. If anybody's running a bingo card, you're about to get a fucking stamp on it. Um, I'm, I'm a torchbearer. Humanity isn't ready for full everyone doing anarchism. It works and it's, it works in various places. It's happening all around the globe, but it's not happening on a global scale. It's not everyone doing it. Waiting for that system. That's going to happen in the future. We're still young as a species. We're, we're dumb. We're young. We're not there yet. But there's plenty of places that I could point to you that are using anarchistic modes of operation, that are using communalistic style of living, that are using communitarian style of living, um, that are doing these things on a daily basis and have been for many, many, many years and places that did it for hundreds of years. So there's a little bit of hope and a little bit of doom for you there, Checker. Um, balance out that depression for you. Uh, what's my take on healthcare? Um, that you need an intermediary uh, system um, and that healthcare is a human right. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, yesterday I would have fucking s snapped up that chance, but I probably would have fucking browbeat the fuck out of you yesterday. Uh, yesterday was not a good day for that. Um, uh, all right, fine. Um, who asked? Theo. Um, yeah. Discord link. Uh, oh shit. Okay, I will tell you right now, Theo, somebody's already backstopped you, um, and you follow Fabian Liberty, and Scott is not an anarchist. Anarchists can't be capitalists. Um, this isn't just me saying this. This is several hundred years of theory saying this. This is globally people saying this. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Let's just put it that way. We it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, Glazy. When you have an entire governmental apparatus that comes at you, as well as people, as well as fucking Tio. Yeah, you have people that do that. Um, of course he's on follow only chat. He's a punk bitch. Yeah, Theo, grab the Discord link. I'll see you in uh, voice chat. I'll move you to on air, and we'll have a conversation. Fucking coercive because he's a capitalist, right? He believes in that element of coercion that like you can't talk to me unless you follow me Fucking metrics punk bitch That's <laughs> such a punk bitch move the fact that people put that shit on that like you can't talk to me unless you follow me Jesus Christ Fuck it, eh? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Fake behat capitalist. He doesn't ask money for it. Oh God. Yeah, Viva. We'll see. We'll see, Viva. Oh, yep. Yeah. Holy shit. Look at that. Look at that. Holy shit. Congratulations. You passed the fucking Turing test. Uh, can I get you to count to five, uh, please, so I can do your audio check? Come on, come on, one, five. Sorry, I was just brushing my teeth. Hey, what's up? Uh, can I get you to count to five so I can do your audio check? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Cool. All right. Grazie. Um, congratulations. You did a lot better than a lot of people fucking do with that welcome page. Dude, 
that sorts the wheat from the chaff. Do you be surprised how difficult that is for so many people? <laughs> okay. It's like, well, I'm, I'm kind of new to this whole like political thing. So, or like on Twitch and stuff. And it's quite interesting because most people on Twitch seems to have like a, a quite different um, view world than I do. So it's quite interesting. What is your view of the world? Well, I would say that capitalism, in my view, is the best system we have come up with, even with its inherent flaws. And I think that we have some system, like, just quickly background for me, I'm not from the United States, I'm from Denmark. Fair enough. Uh, so I don't really identify with the whole American political spectrum, because a lot of the stuff that I believe in with capitalism is is involved in like religion and infringement of, of like like gay rights and trans rights and stuff that I completely disagree with on the right. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm not that far right or any in any of that way. Um, can so I, I just wanted to talk about economic policy? Okay. Can I can I add a historical qualifier to capitalism that might sort of like point you in the direction why we look at it the way we look at it? Sure. Um, maybe capitalism is the best we've done so far, right? Like maybe it is, right? But so was constitutional monarchism. So was feudalism, right? Like people discount because they, of the historical context, but right, like you're European, right? You, you know of the social developments that happened under feudalism. You know about the social developments that happened under constitutional monarchism. You know about this, uh, the, the social developments that happened under the age of industrialization and mercantilism, right? Like those pushed society forward, but their time came. There was a point where a new thing came along, a new evolution came along because the cost benefit analysis of the uh, the inherent status quo became unbalanced. What used to be acceptable was no longer acceptable. What used to pay out dividends was no longer paying out dividends. Or if it was paying out dividends, now the cost of those dividends was so steep that people were no longer willing to accept those costs. I put it to you that we may not be at that moment for capitalism yet. In my opinion, we are. But maybe we aren't. But that moment is coming because historically – that's the, that's the cycle. That's the story of mankind. There's never been one system of governance, one economic system that has uh, stood the test of time through empire and empire, through continent and continent, through millennium and millennium, right? Like capitalism will, has had its day and maybe today is still its day, but maybe tomorrow isn't its day. Okay. Um, I would say that the, the great things about capitalism is it, it kind of effectivizes and um, the English word for it is, is maximizing the individual. And then there's obviously the huge downturns of the lack of social security and welfare that a lot of people go through. And there's a tons of exploitation and corruption as well in capitalism. Um, but I would say that the model that the, the Northern Europe has, has come up with that kind of balances the free market economy with maximizing the individual, but also keeping in a social welfare net that protects the lower, uh, less fortunate in society um, is a pretty good model. And I think that a lot of countries could learn from that. And again, if I were having a conversation with a MAGA hat wearing, um, tr uh, like, you know, coal, rolling coal lifted truck, American flag waving, beer a swill a swilling, AR-15 waving Republican, I most assuredly would use one of the Nordic models as a basis mm -hmm. for, uh, for arguing with them, for having that debate. But I'm looking further forward than that with you. Because you already understand how to strap capitalism to the floor, kneecap it where it needs kneecapping. And, but my point is that why neuter the system? Because the fact of the matter is, is those, those flaws are actually inherent in the capitalistic model. You have to basically retcon or retroactive continuity – I don't know how, you know, what English terms you're familiar with or not. Uh, you sort of have to retcon capitalism 
to make it work for that individual, for the people, because it really isn't designed to do that. So what you end up with is taking a inherently coercive, inherently hierarchical, inherently abusive economic modality and basically just chaining it to the floor but can we discuss, so that it doesn't so, eat you. So the, what is, well, the one thing I disagree with when I've just like listened to, to leftist podcasts and stuff is mm -hmm. that the inherent idea of a labor contract being abusive. And also quickly, because I saw someone in, in chat telling me that like uh, maximizing, what I mean by maximize is being able to use the individual skill set the best, you know, so you get the best people for the job because of their merit are being pushed forward. And profit is a way to incentivize that. I mean, I'm not trying to dismiss anyone's, you know, grievances or all the negative impacts that capitalism has had. But I would also say that there's some good things, right? I mean, we have, you know, the living standards through capitalism and the, the revolutionary technology we had through capitalism Dep has increased. Depends. Has okay. Increased. First off, a lot of that technology is actually done using like communalistic standards, open source standards, especially from the information age. So let's just add an asterisk. I'm not going to like redefine it. I'm just going to say, let's remind ourselves that the majority of the internet is run on open source technology. And that is inherently okay. antithetical, antithetical to the capitalistic model. I just want that added to the discussion. That's all. But even like, so, okay. So, the idea left has come from the idea that I've, let's say I have a company, I hire someone to make something for me, I make a profit and I pay them a base salary. And that is robbing them of their value because I don't pay 100% of their value or, um, or their labor value, right? So I understand or? I mean, okay, so one, it, you need to understand that the labor theory of value isn't a leftist theory. It's cited by Marx and it's spouted by MLs more often than not, but it is actually a Smithian concept. It's Adam Smith, the father of capitalism, who uh, created the labor theory of value. Okay. So that concept that you're about to criticize is actually born of the daddy of capitalism. It's his idea that that's, that's where that theft is occurring. Okay. But so you classify that as theft, but I, I would classify this as a voluntary contract between. Why do those workers join the company? For a guaranteed income. Why? To provide themselves food, shelter, and necessities for life or recreational activity, etc. Because circumstances forced them to. Well, I mean, yes, but like. So then we can talk about the whole idea of what you are entitled to as a human being and what is inherent in a right. And maybe we should, you know, put that as a baseline. Okay, let's put that as a baseline. So when I wrote in chat that I said that, like, um, that healthcare isn't a human right, what I mean by that is that it's hard for me to, to you see as being entitled to other people's work, right? That was my kind of, kind of idea of it. Um, that's not to say that I don't think a, a, a opt or like a taxpayer universal health care or social welfare nets aren't, aren't important, but stuff like the right to free speech, the right to assembly, things that can only be enforced by inaction instead of action seems to be a right. And the, la the other stuff is a, a privilege, right? Just so we know what the difference between a right and a privilege is. How about I put it to you that there is no such thing as human rights? I would say that that kind of sad because then you would say that humans inherently don't have value, right? No, I think we do. But I think you're uh, attempting to make arbitrary moralistic decisions or, or arbitrary moralistic uh, dividers. Uh, you're creating lines in the sand that aren't actually objective truths because there are no objective truths. So this is all idiosyncratic human social constructs that we're talking about. Okay. So what I'm positing mm -hmm. is that a more humanistic system, a more human centric system, a more equitable and equal system should be our long-term goal at least. 
right? I recognize I'm, I'm pragmatic enough. I'm not one of those like completely stark raving mad ones that you may encounter like, you know, complete like insurrection now. Like you're like, come on, dude, you're completely delusional, right? I'm, I'm pragmatic enough to know that there's got to be, and I call it the Sujian methodology, ship of Theseus, right? Let's componentize this in piece by piece, right? While the ship is under sail, we can fix it. But at least the long-term goal should be something far better than capitalism, right? So, I mean, I, I mean, if there's a way to fix the inherent inequalities, as long as it's based on, well, so how, how would you find the right person for the job, for example? I would. Like, how would we know who to be sewer cleaners and who to be roofers and stuff? Oh, see, that right there is right out of the gate, right? Um, how much experience and knowledge, like, okay, can I ask you what you do for a living? This has just helped me. Oh, um, I do. And like, I do online trading and I play poker for a living. So okay. Kind of- uh, okay. So you, you're probably not familiar with like top, uh, topology. Um, are you? Probably not. No. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm an information technologist, uh, an IT consultant from way back, and a topologist in my own right, right? This is where I would start talking to you about distri- distributed network topologies. And this, okay. is, this is the power of anarchism, right? This is the power of decentralized networks. If you talk to, like, any IT nerd, um, mm-hmm. they'll talk to you, like, uh, peer-to-peer networks, right? Like BitTorrent, right? Nobody's ever been able to shut down BitTorrent. Piracy, bad. Courts everywhere, police everywhere, but nobody can shut this shit down, right? Because it's peer-to-peer. It's a distributed network. Mm -hmm. So this is the power of a distributed topology, is that anybody who wishes to participate can participate and can do some heavy lifting along the way. Small amounts, large amounts, that sort of thing. Now, this is scalable. The scope and scale issue is easily addressed within these sorts of uh, topological environments. Anarchistic communes or uh, or groups that operate this way, and there are many, by the way, like uh, Kaspaya lasted for 375 years before the papal states did what the papal states do, right? But uh, we have like uh, Trumbleplex outside of Detroit that weathered, like Detroit fell the fuck apart and Trumbleplex is still going just fine and, they, you know, they're thriving. Um, there are ways to do non-coercive job selection in a rotational basis that provide for the less uh, desirable tasks because most of those less desirable tasks are less desirable because you're looking at them from the aspect of having to do it for the rest of your life 40 hours a uh, a week when you when you change when you change that dynamic it becomes Mm -hmm. more desirable it's like cleaning the toilet in your own house you don't want to do it but you do what about the 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 skills like how like being able to retain a skill and being able to be good at a job, for example. Isn't there a lot of training involved to being able to do roofing, for example, or, or a lot of these more advanced things, like operating um, an electric, like a nuclear power plant, for example? How would you keep those people rotating? Uh, it just sort of depends. Because if you want to have your nuclear power plant, which, fine, that's fine. Uh, I actually argue against environmentalists all the time to have maintained nuclear power as part of the grid because we need a a stopgap. That's always a fun argument to have. Um, Okay, well, I was just meaning, I mean, like, um, high risk for mm -hmm. mistakes, you know? Like, if you... You're, you're You're looking for the skilled versus unskilled labor, right? Oh, well, I mean... I mean, any, like an artist can be heavily skilled, but I'm just saying that like if love, you mess I, up I love and that you click do, the I wrong love that button you dodged power plant. Um, actually, that's, I mean, one, we got lots of fucking safety features on, on nuclear power plants, luckily. Um, so nobody's one click away usually from creating a, a meltdown. Um, but journeyman apprenticeship programs are very easy to run in a uh, communal uh, setting and we've been doing them for generations upon generations upon generations in humanity it's not a new technology it's not a new technique and even soviet russia mastered this right like this is part of the problem the russian federation has with their crumbling infrastructures they did away with the apprenticeship apprenticeship journeyman program that the soviets installed and as such they forced out uh, they forced all of their old uh, masters into retirement and then there was no one to train the and the new incoming and now they've got issues to say the very least apprenticeship journeyman programs are easily 
done in these sorts of scenarios. And if you have a predilection for, if you want to engage in that, independent uh, individual uh, autonomy is the starting point for anarchism, right? The communalism aspect arises out of the individual autonomy. You have to have the nodes on the network to, to build the network. So if you want to run a nuclear power plant, let's just keep, mm -hmm. keep the, the metaphor going, keep the, uh, keep the example going, mm -hmm. then what you would do is start a nuclear power plant, a plant project. And you would say, okay, we need to bring expertise into this community. Um, can we form a delegate committee that can review expertise to bring in? You bring in the appropriate expertise. You, tr you say, okay, is there anybody who is willing to dedicate this amount of time, this amount of energy to this? Can we also create a backup or two? That way we are not dependent upon any single one. Because again, we believe in distributed networks. We dis dis uh, believe in distributed topologies. We don't want any single cr uh, central uh, power and like the one dude who knows how to work on the power plant is probably not a good thing to do so we would also like you know we would have a few uh, people that can rotationally deal with this that way we don't put any too uh, too much work on any individual it's it's literally volunteerist based okay what what do we do with a person who then doesn't want to participate in any workforce how do we make sure that we don't coerce this person but also that he, he or she has the or has the means to survive. You we, know, we like, per, we do we do the humane thing. We provide them with whatever we consider the essentials of life, access to and all f throughout, because that opinion may change at some point. We don't know. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I like this. This is fun. There's, there's no, this is one of, okay, so Marx had his, like, of course, Marx didn't abide by this. No fucking communist ever abided by it, but Marx did have a good turn of phrase. He didn't write recipes for the cook shops of the future, right? He did write recipes for the cook shops of the future, and that was half the problem. But anarchists have, like, the, the other side of that coin is there are no projects of project. Uh, there is no project of projects for us. Right. Like you, you may encounter like various flavors of anarchist in your future. That isn't me. I'm an anarchist. My job, my role that I have chosen in this life and have done it for many, many years is to espouse anarchism. If I teach you, if I give you the tools, if I, if I convince you to pursue this in some way, shape, or form, and you go out and you read and you say, okay, look, maybe I'm not going to be a full-blown anarchist, right? But this is a really good idea, and this is a really good idea, and I'm going to incorporate these into my life. I'm not coming into your life tomorrow to tell you how to use those tools. And the same goes for anarchistic communities and mutual aid groups and affinity groups is what we generally call them. We're not prescriptive in anarchism. So it's kind of interesting because this whole calm communal idea, and I really like the way of like rotating jobs and, and like a, that's a, sounds like a much better life than most people have now. What's um, it is, I, but what's interesting to me is like that perceived notion of anarchism is that it means chaos, right? But uh -huh. I expect it to become a communal talk. Uh, you can you can thank the Wilson administration of the United States. Um, for that, um, a series of pamphlets during the Wilson administration to propagandize the West against anarchists, socialists, and communists due to the labor, uh, the rising labor movement that started roughly around the 1880s um, and really fucking f just lit a fire up until the 1920s that led into the 1930s that uh, created the codified uh, labor laws in the New World, at least, uh, for that. Um, we have... Basically, if you had a power structure that you were trying to defend and a dude came along and said, yeah, I've got some ideas that literally make that power structure crumble, you'd probably have a thing, a thing or two to say about him, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's sort of what anarchists face on a day-to-day -day basis on a global scale. If you have an authoritarian structure, we are the panacea to that. Our, our ideas How would you deal with violence, though? That's my, like... Nestor Machno... Um, Ukraine, the Ukrainian Black Army created an anarchistically organized Black Army 
Um, it is difficult for many people to wrap their heads around how you can have hierarchically or horizontal, hierarchically organized uh, military structures. But in fact, the United States Department of Defense has studied it at length. And most of our spec ops teams operate hierarchically when they are in the field. Once you have a task, it is your job to get the task done once you're out there. There's no calling up the chain of command to, uh, to understand it or fix it or change how you operate. So most of them are actually trained to operate hierarchically once they're in the field. Nestor Machno um, managed to organize a nationwide army hierarchically um, with no uh, hierarchical chain of command. Um, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Russians many times. It's only uh, because of two treaty violations by Lenin literally stabbing them in the back and stealing some of their fucking supplies that uh, led to a couple of critical collapses so they could get a break in the armor of the Black Army. Otherwise, we might have seen a different outcome entirely. So how would you... So, okay, this is... I did not expect this conversation to go this way at all. That's, this is really interesting. So how would you go about implementing a system like this in the future? Do you think this is a natural progression of society? It's, or do you think it will be a violent overthrowing? It's always been with us. So this is the hilarious part. Um, the general distinction that, like, at least political scientists that are schooled in anarchism, which they are few and far, be uh, far between, um, make a distinction. Anarchy is what the indigenous societies of the world utilize. Heterarchically organized, distributed uh, uh, tribal structure, these sorts of things. If you really want to see a great example, look at the archipelago, a.k.a. the Philippines, um, but before they went full col uh, colonized and named it after Philip. Um, it, they prefer, uh, the, the people of the archipelago prefer to call it the archipelago. Um, if you look at their tribal structures, you see a very um, anarchistically uh, organized group. We refer to that as anarchy. Anarchism and anarchists are sort of the formalized theory that is born out of European uh, for, uh, formalized uh, acad uh, academia. Um, so it has always sort of been with us in one way, shape, or form. Um, and so it is also like you can look at Spain during the Spanish Civil War. 50% of their agriculture and uh, industry was being produced by anarchistically organized communes during the Civil War. So like literally like half of their country was being propped up by anarchists. Um that we're organizing this way. So in times of crisis, anarchism is there to save our ass. In the before times, anarchism was there, uh, was our natural organizational style. Um, and so my argument would be that you, okay, so it wouldn't even be an argument. My, my nuance would be that there's two schools of thought on this. There are the insurrectionary anarchists, and then there's people like me that believe there is a path to it without doing the like without becoming obsessed with the like French Revolution meta narrative that seems to have embedded itself in the leftist consciousness. Um, and that's where my Thesusian methodologies come from. Um, I, I do believe we can pull a ship of Theseus out of our ass on this one. Um, can I ask you a really personal question? Uh -huh. So one thing I've been dealing with a lot myself is that I grew up um, pretty disenfranchised and pretty poor and I end up doing quite well for myself. But one of the things I've dealt with is that I have an innate ball in my stomach all the time. And I have, I feel like because I'm doing so well now, I have an innate duty to help other people around. Me. Okay. And I feel like the only, I feel a lot of guilt for doing well, but I only, only feel real relief of that ball when I help others. Do you think that's a system? Because I have a few friends I talk to who are, who are dealing with the same thing. You know, we like, you know those talks when you have, and it's like 4 a.m. and you're drunk, and you just talk about how you feel in your stomach, and you're like, there's something wrong. Do you think that this is like one of the things that could be is because you live in this perpetual there is cycle? No, of there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. You have to understand that. Mm -hmm. The system Dude, is I literally... I literally live in like a, it's weird, right? Because I come from eating fried sandwich meat and, you know, fearing tax authorities and all this shit. And like, mm -hmm. you know, you... and then now I live in a, in a pretty good apartment, but like I have friends who have massive student debt and I have friends who it's, it's a weird fucking world, man. Like it's like, it's you, you know, crazy. you don't, you don't need me to tell you, you know, we can do better. You know, yeah, obviously we can do better. You know we can do better. And so I because you feel privileged, because mm -hmm. you felt non privileged before, you've seen the other side of the tracks. You know mm -hmm. how brutal the system can be. 
you know how ruthless it can be. And so even yeah. though you find yourself at a, a, a turning point in your life, you find yourself at a, with ease in your life, you still feel that unease because you know it's still there, whether it's being pointed at you or not. Does that ball that, you, uh, that I experienced, does that go away for you when you talk about this stuff? I haven't experienced that ball in a lot of years because I've done a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty fucking privileged. I'm pretty fucking privileged. Um, but I, like, we don't talk about the early years of Kai. Hi, my name's Kai, by the way. Um, we don't talk about those early years too much, but we just saw, like, I was an Occupy organizer, but before that, I was an anarchist in the streets. Um, I've put my time in, and I came to theory later. Um, I learned my anarchism by doing anarchism. Um, and what does that mean to do? Does that mean to talk about it or does it mean to do anything specifically? It means, okay. So one, it means direct action and two, it means praxis. So praxis is theory put into direct action, reflected upon, and then modified, right? You take your theory, you put it into practice and you say, okay, how can we fix it? What, what do we need to tweak? And then you retool your theory and you put it back into direct action, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. fundamentally direct action. So when anarchists do direct action, we don't like to talk about it for a variety of reasons, because one, it's usually various degrees of illegal. Um, and two, that's not what it's about. That's not what we want to glorify because that's the, that's the dirty work that needs doing most of the time. That's the sort of thing of preventing an indigenous community from getting fucking bulldozed. It's pretty, you know, making sure that the cops don't bust up a gay club. It's that sort of mm -hmm. stuff that we, we just, you know, that's the, the necessary stuff. And so what I usually tell people is being an anarchist is 51% education, 49% action. Right, like something. I, I really wish that like there could be more conversations like this because it's it's like I came in and I was like I need to just try to either solidify my own opinions or try to understand other people's perspective because there's so much anger and division and I I want to learn from it and I also have a, I like with the ball we talk about it comes from a place of inaction I guess but it also comes from a sense of frustration like I would I go I do I go around and like I buy food for homeless people or talk about why they're in this situation they are but it's always you feel like you're just putting a bandit on a gaping wound because you there's are. pretty much nothing you can do but you're doing like you're doing it and that's it, you are putting a band-aid on a gaping wound but two things one i'm going to come back to i'm going to put a pin in you notice there's homeless people even in your society but mm -hmm. two that homeless person was going to be hungry that night right Mm -hmm. Were they hungry after they met you? Yeah, but that hunger is going to come back. I just feel like don't you, you don't know, you're in a don't, ship don't, that's don't, sinking, don't, but it don't, doesn't. Don't don't do that to yourself. Can I ask how it, roughly how old you are? Twenty five. Okay, there's that's that's it right there. I know I look younger. I'm almost forty. Um, okay. so there is no past. There is no future. There is but now. It's difficult for Westerners to truly come to terms with this, but it is the truth. And once you come to this truth and you truly integrate it into your being, you are there for another human being in their moment of need. They may have another moment of need that you won't be there for. But that's that seems to me to be the only really meaning of life, even with all this like other stuff. Like that's the only time that life really makes sense, you know? So focus on that that's what you need to focus on because that is the thing anarchists do that's in my opinion some of the best things that we do are you familiar with food not bombs no food not bombs is an anarchistic organization that is hierarchically organized there is no leadership right now they're feeding people all across the globe simultaneously um i'll get you i'll get you a map uh hold on um, I'll get you the fuck, uh, the map. Um, all right, there we go. And if you look on the screen, this is where food, not bombs is feeding people right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Capitalism is starving people. Food, not bombs, bunch of anarchists who have no hierarchical organization whatsoever. Nobody instructing them what to do. Nobody forcing them to do anything is feeding people in all of these locations, 
all across the globe as we speak, right? It's that sort of thing that makes an anarchist. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, you, I mean, you, you are what I mean, you are, but one man, right? You, you can't change the world, but you know what? You kind of do. Think about, I mean, think about all those historical moments. Like that's, it's weird and idealistic to think about it that way, but as fucked up as America is, right? Take it as a concept. It was a mm-hmm. bunch of fucking drunken bros, your age and younger. The founding fathers of America were young as shit. We look at them as like old white dudes, but they were young as fuck when they kicked that shit off. They were a bunch of drunken bros hanging out in a pub in Philadelphia, and one of them basically snaps off and goes, you know we can do better, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward a couple hundred years, and it's an empire, right? Not the best idea. But it shows you the power of what can happen between just a few people in a conversation. What I find harder now, though, is that so whenever like I'll go in and I'll, I'll look up like a communist talking point or you know a, a liberal left, and you know it's mostly discussions about taxes and the rich should pay more and stuff. And I understand where these merits come from, but right now I look at, at the West and I'm like the money is there, but nothing's being done. Because, you know, like, be, because we, have we already housing that is a disaster and all these different because things. we already live in a post scarcity society globally. We live in a post scarcity society. The issue is logistics. There's no need for we already produce more food than people mm-hmm. eat. We know this. The waste levels are, have been analyzed to the nth degree. We can feed the globe several times over. The waste in the U.S. Uh, military budget alone could probably clothe and educate the, uh, the world several times over. It's, it's a logistics issue. It's the fact that the system is designed this way. It's not broken. This is a feature this is the function of the system. It's but designed. But you think this was inherently evil, mate? Because you talked about these young, uh, like uh, the founding fathers, as young bros. Do you think that they in picture of this, or do you think it's been yeah. slowly corrupted? Uh, no, I mean, let's face it. Jefferson was one. Pro- as far as the English language goes, Thomas Jefferson was potentially the greatest political writer, maybe ever. Right? Definitely top five territory. Right? Like this fucker could put prose down as far as political verse goes. He was a privileged white boy who refused to free his slave, like his like slave baby mama, even after he died. Right. Like this isn't, this isn't a great guy, right? Like he wanted to maintain his, he caught, he knew slavery was, he called it a hideous blot. And yet he maintained it because he wanted to maintain his wealth. He wanted to maintain his station in society. For how do we erode for, that in anarchism then? Because if we if we look at even the what what like the best writers, don't you think that those issues will erupt in in anarchism where people will feel entitled to other people's bodies or wanting to be in a certain position and stuff? Yes. Now you want the rest of that answer? Yeah, of course. As a network technologist. One of the things I have gleaned is that as far as network topologies go, which is all these things are, right? Society is just, you can abstract it to a network. Individuals are nodes, the connections between them form the greater network, et cetera, et cetera. As far as network topologies go, there is centralized, decentralized, and distributed. This is basically as far as humanity has evolved and devolved because the argument is that we started with distributed and we've devolved into centralized and decentralized. The most resilient system, the most resistant to corruption is the distributed network topology. You will always have bad actors. You will always have people that attempt to make grabs for power. You will always have these facets of the human experience. So why not implement a system that at least is the one that can account for it the best and resist Mm -hmm. it the most. Okay. It's kind of interesting because when I came into this conversation, that was one of my viewpoints was that the lesser of, of evils was capitalism in that sense. 
neutered, I guess. But <laughs> to borrow um, my turn and phrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. But how would you? The the problem I see with human history is that I see that the bad guys have always won. You know, like I've never. What kind of society do we see where the good guys have ever won? Kuspaya. At, what is this, sir? Kospaya, the Anarchistic Republic of Kospaya, C-O-S-P-A-I-A. Um, somebody can link in chat. I wrote a, uh, one of my. There's an essay on my website about it. Uh, it was a. It was a piece of. It was a strip of land. Um, basically, the um, papal states were doing a survey, and um, I f- forget which prince. Um, basically, there was a a, a, a mis survey. And both uh, uh, both groups surveyed their property. Yep, there's uh, there's the one. Uh, it's in chat. Um, they surveyed their land to not include. They all each went to the the opposite side of their riverbank, and so there's a several a several mile strip of land in the middle of a river in Italy. And as such, the people who lived there saw this opportunity and declared it sovereign. And both sides saw it as a buffer state. They're like, that's fine. You know, mm-hmm. that you put something between us. That's logically sound. Let's keep it that way. So Kospaya basically organizes themselves along anarchistic lines. They operate economically uh, under what would be defined as modern day. We would define it as communitarianism, which is basically just a familial structure. Um, so it's like you don't charge your family for shit, right? Like your, your brother comes over for a meal – you cook your brother a meal. You don't charge your brother for a fucking meal. Um, so they, their, their society lasted for 375 years without cops, without an army, without judges, without lawyers, without any formalized laws. They actually ended up being encircled by the papal states and starved out and fo- uh, and uh, were forced uh, to resign their sovereignty, and they even got little coins. And to this day, you can go and they um, they celebrate every year, um, sort of a spit in the face of Italy uh, celebration. The reason they that, they yeah. reason they starved them out is because this little strip of land was beginning to outcompete the entirety of the papal states economically. When the uh, when the Catholics began uh, persecuting Jews across Italy, the Jews fled to Cospaia because they knew that this land was filled with people that believed in these non-aggression, hierarchically organized, non-oppressive society rules. So they were safe there and they were welcome there. Um, so yeah, Cospaya put up 375 years, which I mean, you're, you're a European, you know, America's younger than that, right? Like they, they've, I mean, that sounds pretty awesome. It sounds like a society because I've growing up, I have never had the feeling in your heart that what you're doing is the right thing. You know, it's always been a means to an end or because you want to escape a trauma in your previous, like in your early years, or you want to solve an immediate issue, but like, kind of interesting how a lot of our my friends and I have just like you know sat and just looked at each other and was like there's something inherently wrong isn't there like yeah like it's broken and it's it, and like I say it's not broken broken because that's the way it's designed right like I mean at least from America you know I mean you guys have a much deeper history to contend with we have a good little like reset position that we can work from right it's like wiping the slate clean and starting with something else and you can sort of look at it analytically differently it provides different data points we were founded by a bunch of fucking white owning rich land uh, uh rich white owning uh, uh land owning white males right they they consider black people three-fifths of a person and indigenous people mm-hmm. not people and women not people right like the, the system is operating as intended um so do you think that people who are in that kind of power are are ha- actually happy or do you think they just sedate themselves beyond belief I've known a few. Um, we've gone into this before on the channel. My stepfather is old New England money. Um, mm-hmm. And like first joint he ever smoked was with the great grandson of a president, right? There's many people in power today, many CEOs on a global scale mm-hmm. that he calls like classmates and childhood friends. 
Um, I've known a few in my life. I've talked to these people. Mm -hmm. There's two camps that I would divide them into. Learned sociopaths. Right? They are... Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not inherently that way, but they are raised from day one in an environment that has taught them that they are better, that they are separate, and they have lived a separate life in which they are better. And they have been given every benefit, every possible uh, opportunity. And so, yeah, yeah, they speak five languages. They, you know, they, they are aware of those nuances of philosophy because they were schooled in it. And if they had a conversation with somebody from a trailer park in Tennessee, they would feel themselves to be superior. So they act superior. And then there's the other camp, the truly malevolent. And they are a different thing entirely. Um... I don't like using um, like religious-based ethical judgments such as evil, but since you invoked it earlier, that's mm-hmm. closer to that camp. Um, and I've, I've met a few of those that you're like, yeah, they really do see you as a lesser being. Um, yeah. I just, I can't even put myself in, in those shoes. I mean, even though I'm doing well for myself some of my best memories is meeting people i thought i would never have the chance to meet in my life funny i was sitting outside i am in canada right now and i was in this this wedding on outside of um outside of like in a, in a rural canada and we was in a, in a barn and i was dancing with um the groom's grandmother and they were so different culturally to me and it was just like one of those moments where you look up in the sky and you're like holy like you know what I mean? Like the the notes went down this way that I actually had to meet people I would never ever meet in my entire life if I had actually did this way. And we were drinking like moonshine and stuff like that. It was hilarious. And like you just go through life and you think, and those people think that like they're inherently more because of what? Because they have an artificial currency that 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 is worth more. Or what is it? It, just, it seems inhuman. That's because. Everything they've ever experienced has told them that. You are the sum of your experiences. It's just the truth. I didn't, no, well, I didn't, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, I didn't mean to be like, wow, poor people. I just meant like, I would never, if I didn't get to, down this path, I would never had a chance to even mm-hmm. see what any other, like, that's my life goal is to try to, you know how you like, you, I was born in Northern Europe, like I was born in the most absolute, if you could pick a lottery ticket, that would be like the most best place to grow up. And I feel like if you, I would never had the chance to see what anyone else had, would live like if it wasn't for those kind of things. Here's, here's the, the flip side to that. Um, you're, you're European, y'all, y'all travel. Um, I'm one of the few Americans that carries a passport. Um, I know the joke. Um, I will tell you there, I have met plenty of people in plenty of locations. You could not for the world, get them to have traded with you for their upbringing and they are dirt poor. Well, it, there are things in this world that people can value that transcend political systems, that transcend economic systems, and I've seen it. I've seen it when I was in Puerto Rico. I've seen it when I was in Dominica. I've seen it when I was in Belize. I've seen it when I have seen it where Mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, this is fucking heaven. You live in fucking paradise. And yeah, maybe you don't have fucking social security and you don't have high-speed internet, but you know what? I wouldn't trade this for any of that either, frankly. So, like, yeah, it's a perspectives issue. And I, I love that you're open to seeing those other perspectives. And clearly, I hope, uh, with all ego aside, I hope uh, I've, I've added another um, aspect to your ever-growing perspective. I mean, I mean, I had no idea that anarchism was this. I was like, I'm really, I didn't mean to be like, okay. I mean, I grew up super poor, so it's not like, you know, like I didn't, 
it's not like I mean poor on a in a Denmark scale, you know, not in like a yeah. on a global scale, of course. So but yeah, definitely um, a very interesting conversation. You seem fairly decently learned. If you want to read some stuff, I can point you in some directions that. Maybe. I definitely want to read this. Um, I bookmarked the Crispia. Uh, That's like there's a the few. First thing you can you can. There's a few things. Um, I would suggest the Anarcho Syndicalism 101 uh, on my writing section as well. Um, and also a, the Tent Poles essay. It'll be the three Tent Poles of American oppression. It's applicable to other places, but it's written from the perspective of an American. Um, definitely worth reading for, to understand how people can sort of believe what they believe and how we're kind of fucked. Um, but there is a book off the top of my head that I think that if you want to start understanding anarchism to a better degree is worth looking into. Um, and it's called The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna, K-I-N-N-A. The Government of No One. Yeah. Okay. I definitely want to. So crazy how I had such a completely different perceived notion of what anarchism is coming into this conversation. No one is immune from propaganda. And it's kind of crazy when you've been gaslit and you just kind of go, whoa, wait, this isn't that bad talking points. This is kind of interesting. Sounds like a way more fulfilling life. It is. It is. Um, there is a tendency you can see like in the, in the founders and a lot of the people and the proponents some of the only, a lot of the ones who find their way to anarchism and become the educators and theorists of anarchism tend to come from privileged places. And that's why I would refer you to the, the tent poles essay, because the first tent pole is a poverty of philosophy. They keep you, they keep the, the tools away from you. And is this, there any chance, because I'm, I'm, I'm really, is there, any, is there any way that this is on your discord or is there, or something like that? I can... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all uh, just, I mean, which one? Uh, the tent poles? Um, yeah, like all of that is under the writing section. Um, but right there, okay. Che just linked the tent poles uh, in chat. So if you want to bookmark that one. Um, and somebody do the Ansin one. It's exclamation Ansin, please and thank you. Um, oh, okay, it's on, on your website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, those those That's three sweet. essays will, will be under the writing section um, uh, on the... Uh, <laughs> Fucking for two. Good try, though. Um, those three essays will all be under the writing section of the website. But um, The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna, K-I-N-N-A. It's definitely worth reading. She'll walk you through some of the historical figures, some of the... There it is. Um, you can feel free to bookmark that one, too. Anarcho-syndicalism is sort of like a first step. Uh, syndicalism from the French syndicat, meaning trade union. Um, so, and then anarchistically organized. And it'll explain, it'll walk you through like the scope and scale issues, how you federate it, that sort of stuff. Um, so it'll give you like baby's first like anarchist lesson sort of t situation. But Ruth will walk you through like some of the historical figures, some of the historical movements, some of the methods of analysis that anarchism uses, um, intersectionality, stuff like that. Do you think that this is something that you and I will ever get to experience a glimmer of in our lifetime? Or do you think this is like 10th generations away? Or oh, I have. You have to... I, I see. I've, I've participated in anarchistically organized op, uh, like organizations and uh, communities before. So I've, I've seen it. I've lived it. I've experienced it um, on a global scale, not in our lifetime. No. Do, do you think we need like a complete crisis before that happens no i just think humanity needs to grow the fuck up first we're not ready do you think do you think we can yeah i do um but like i said uh anarchism falls under idealism as a philosophy so i have to believe that okay i wouldn't i would say that like i came into this conversation not with the idea of trying to convince you it's more the idea of trying to like understand what i think for my like what i think mm -hmm. and it's also like I wish that I wish that more conversations were like this because I feel like it, everything I view has just become so toxic so so fast. Like um, you know, like you you come in, you join, you try to ask a question. There's toxicity. I guess it's because of like previous experiences with people trying to. Uh, have a talk and then it just devolves into like name calling super fast well it's difficult especially as like if from the streamers like from this from the chair's point of view right from my perspective right like it, the first the first thing i have to wonder is are you going to get on the air and start screaming gamer words 
mm-hmm. right? Like, is the first word going to be out of your mouth, like N R N R N R, like that sort of thing? Like, I have to worry mm-hmm. about bad faith actors on a regular basis. And then we have people like uh, the ANCAPs running around who literally operate in bad faith. Murray Rothbard I- intentionally tried to co op the term anarchist to provide political cover for their shit ideology that is but nothing. But what's the difference? Okay, I'll, 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 you know, I don't, you don't need to, like, let, but I, I was just going to. I can't. What is the what? Wait, what did they believe in then? That is so. Okay. Is that a, like an aggressive way of anarchism? No, no, no. They they're capitalists. They so what they are is they're anti-statist capitalists. Um, so just yeah, they it, they don't have under- any rights to best will survive. Kind it's of thing? it's feudalism. It's feudalism. It, no, I'm not. I'm not being like. I'm not being using it as a pejorative. It's literally feudalism. Um, they believe they're they've appropriated misappropriated the terminology of anarchists because they don't understand anarchism they think that just anarchism equals government bad so they want to get rid of the government and then do uh, a like a, a true capitalism laissez-faire capitalism right which would just lead to like jeff bezos and fucking elon musk running your life so that's that's their argument. And one of their like primary – like they're all based off the Austrian school of economics, von Mises and Hayek. Um, and then it's run through a filter of like Nozick and Rothbard up until uh, Hans-Hermann Hoppe in the present day. And Rothbard is the one who gave them the term anarcho-capitalism to literally in his own words to pr- – uh, it is a bad faith attempt to provide political cover. They he admitted himself. It's in no way, shape, or form are they. If we consider historically or etymologically the term anarchists, we are of course not anarchists, right? They literally are trying to co-opt a term to provide themselves shit, political cover because they have a shit ideology that is nothing more than neo feudalism. Yeah, I mean, when I came into this conversation, for me to be able to do this kind of stuff, I I go in with the view that. You have good intentions, and your your view is to what we believe as the best for everyone's society, right? And that's, I mean, that's the kind of way you, you have to believe that you the person you're talking to is is a good person is the best way I can describe it. Because I wouldn't talk to them. Fair but enough. like, I was um, the same reason why I would love to talk to anyone who's like a communist or a socialist because I inherently believe that they don't come from a bad place. Either they, but you believe that people like who are anarcho-capitalists are like coming yes. from a bad place. No, they, they, they very much are. And at least as far as Fabian Liberty goes, we have experience with him directly. And he has done things such as admitting on voice calls on Discord behind the scenes that he teaches his community um, bad faith and logical fallacy techniques to undermine conversations with leftists. This sounds so toxic. What the- yeah. It's somebody who is advocating for the right to own basically people. Kind of mess, messed up. Kind of, it's kind of sad to think about, like, you know, I spent the last 25 years, or well, I mean, most of, not 20, adulthood, escaping problems of capitalism, solving them by giving myself capital, to then feel a hole in my stomach and try to band-aid that by giving to people less fortunate to me and then feeling lost because you feel like it's just an empty sea of, of blood and you don't know what to do about it. So it's kind of sad way. Of you are, you're, you're traveling right now, right? Um, are you going to be traveling mm-hmm. elsewhere? Well, right now with COVID, I kind of, I want to go back and see my family, but I wanted my only goal of before I die, cause I feel like life is too short. is just to travel around the world and see what lottery ticket I didn't get. Okay. Like do like a month in a monastery or go around. Like my goal would be, my dream would be to like travel to India, buy a bunch of street food and just sit down and write down what people say to me about their experiences. And then hopefully take that with me before I die. You know, <laughs> that would be my, my goal. Who's got the list? Somebody post the list of anarchist communities. Somebody put the Wikipedia up earlier. I saw it. Somebody drop it in chat again. There's a list of like anarchist communities um that on on wikipedia see if you can't swing by a couple of them on, on your travels that'd be fun there you it's go so crazy because like I've, I've always been so because i've the only views i've seen of anarchists are the black blocks in copenhagen yes you know like the um, black 
Che, che put it in chat for you. There's a list of anarchist communities. Um, there's many more, but there's there's some of them. Um, and see how many, like, if you're in the area, contact. I, wait, I went to school next to Freetown Christiania. What? <laughs> there you go. But I didn't realize they were anarchists. They they utilize hierarchical organizational methodologies, consensus decision making, all of which are anarchist tools. Yeah. Would all of them be as peaceful? Would you do? Would you say to having a conversation with me like you were today? I have no idea. And they're not inherent. Are they inherent passives, or would you know if I no. came in and, and no? Would they? I don't. I don't know. Remember, there is it, anarchism isn't prescriptive. There is no project of projects. I cannot speak for other anarchists. I can tell you about the tale of a a fucking North American nineteen year old ANCAP who went and fucked with a bunch of Greek anarchists in their headquarters in Greece and got the shit kicked out of him. So, like, you know, no, anarchists aren't inherently pacifists, but generally we are an accepting lot. Um, you just have to you're a, you're a world traveler at this point. You get it. You're you're European to some, uh, some extent. Like you guys usually understand this shit. There there's there's tourists and there's travelers. Be a traveler. The same goes for any anarchist community, right? Approach them, don't be weird about it. Don't be don't be demanding. Don't just roll up fucking taking video of everything. That sort of thing. Don't be creepy, don't be weird, but be friendly like you were with me. Be open and say I'm curious. I've, I've had some experience. I've had some great conversations with anarchists before, and I'd love if, if you've got the time and if you've got, you know, if you've got a f few spare minutes, I'd love to, like, look around and see how you guys live. And you'd be surprised. People are people, right? It's that simple. Just be a good traveler. They'll, you'll be fine. And all these are, so they're just the active societies. Sorry, I'm looking at the thing. It, at the... it depends. Again, contact them when you're in the area. See, see yeah. if, if there's anything. I can tell you Trumbleplex outside Detroit is completely active. There's a couple of, there's Virgi one in Virginia that's pretty big and very active. Um, don't go to the Zapatistas in, Me in Mexico. They've got other issues they're dealing with right now. They don't have time for fucking, you know, to, to be given guided tours. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, and uh, Rojava <laughs> is, Rojava has got its own issues. Again, not time for, not time to give tours right now in Rojava. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're dealing with like ISIS insurgents and shit like that. They got other, they got bigger fish to fry right now than handhold you through some anarchist stuff. But yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, just, just be the way you were with me and you'd be surprised. There's plenty of people out there. that will be like, yeah, come on in. That's awesome. All right, man. Thank you so much. This was, this was great. I, did, I learned a lot. I did not expect it to be this way. This was really cool. Yeah, yeah, fucking Cassie said, only go to Rojava if you want to lend a hand in the fight. <laughs> fucking, here's here's your rifle, my man. Fucking the front lines that way. Um, but yeah, no, you're you're more than welcome. And hang out in the Discord community. And like, the longer you hang out, there's fucking like library cards, and there's certain stuff will fucking kick your way and open doors for you and that sort of thing. And if you've got further questions and you want to know more, we're more than happy to educate and have a conversation. And we've got a fairly active community and. We uh, and you know if you want to just get drunk uh, or stoned and hang out and watch bad movies, we do, we do that every Friday night. So that sounds that sounds pretty cool. All right, man. All right, man. Thank you so much. No All right, have a good night. You too. Bye. -bye. Oh, I love it when they go that way. I love it when they go that way. That soothes my soul. Oh God, that soothes my soul. All right. That's, that, I guess I earned your follow, didn't I, Theo? Um, okay. Um, who, who else wanted to have a conversation? Um, I know somebody else was really fucking jumping up and down, waving their hand and shit like that. Uh, uh, are you in Discord? Mr. A username, okay. Um, damn, the welcome page really is a determination of good versus bad faith. It is, dude, dude. Where, where, dude? That that welcome page, 
Viva, dude, that welcome page puts in fucking work. Dude, he was he was through it like that. Fucking he was through it like that. Like, and the ones who are always the most problematic take like varying degrees of minutes to get through that welcome page. That welcome page really is a determining factor. That's crazy as fuck that that works that way, but it does. Uh, uh, they kind of are Excel. There are anarchist critiques of social contract theory. Um, and we do have disagreements with it. Um, but there's also some agreements with it. I would, I would actually tell you that there's a lot of, again, username, you got to go to discord. The link was above. You have to join discord. You have to go to the voice chat. Um, I would tell you, go to the anarchist library.org Excel, Excel and search for a, a social contract and see all the stuff that comes up. Start reading there. Holy shit. Fucking A, Theo. Thank you, my man. 10 fucking gift subs. Jesus Christ, dropping gift bombs everywhere. Who got them? Estrella, Puddle, Be Over. Fucking, I don't know who Lilith is. Freedom, whoever that is. Patilla, I don't know who that is. Chaotica got one. Steve with a Q. He doesn't come around that often, but I love that name. Uh, Distant Red, you got one too. Rider in a Storm got one as well. Uh, fucking Theo, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, my man. Um... fucking uh, again yeah uh username join join voice chat i'll move you into on air uh uh shoe list theo talked to me for like an hour theo doesn't need to buy my attention theo's just showing gratitude for uh a highly productive and lovely conversation um it was it was it was a very nice one um, so, oh, lovely. Um, yeah, I, I, that was, that was a fun one. I, 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 I wish they all went that way. Oh, what do I got in shared content? Um, We'll just, we'll just let these go by. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, AJ, after, um, after the, di uh, after the disc, after the server, um, uh, after pff, Jesus Christ, after the server, after the stream on Friday nights, um, we do the, the bad movie, uh, night on discord. That's, that's where, the, where, and when, where that happens. Um, so yeah. Oh, Theo, the fucking train wrecks are always rough. Oh. They're always rough. Yeah, again, if you're drunk, Mr. A Username OK, or varying degrees of tipsy, I would caution you against getting on the air. Let's just put it that way. Tomorrow night, Donger. Like, later tonight, whatever your time is. But um, Friday night after the 5.30 p.m. Pacific show. My stream on Friday nights is 5.30 p.m. Pacific U.S. time. After the stream, so like 9.30, 10 o'clock, something around there, we will convene on the voice chat on Discord, and we will watch. We will just get fucked up after a week of doom. Um, and like whatever your thing is, whether you're drinking, whether you're smoking, whether you're fucking running a straight edge, um, we get fucked up and we watch, uh, we watch shitty movies. Um, we tend to do three, we tend to do three. You don't have to watch all three. Um, but we tend to go to the wee hours of the morning. Um, and no, you may not. Uh, yeah, Amaris, we, we tend to do a triple showing. 
Can't do straight edge. Bones will become enraged. Um, I am in the, again, Pacific, Pacific time zone. 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Remember how I was pointing out Pacific? So for me, it's 1.40 a.m. Um, and that is not wee hours for me. I am a lifelong uh, night owl, um, especially after, you know, being an IT consultant for many, many, many years prior to th this. Um, I am, I, I, dude, I, I go to bed in like the, the early AMs. Um, so, yeah. What happens here? Well, we just got done having a lovely conversation with somebody from Denmark, if I, rem I remember correctly. Sorry, Theo. Uh, flow of consciousness, um, who is presently in Canada, who had conversations about anarchism. And we did just a little bit of a Q&A educational session talking about experiences and having a, like I said, a lovely conversation. Um, later, non-binary, sleep well. Take care of yourself. Hope you had a good one. So that's <laughs> fucking song. Jesus Christ. Uh, are you sober? Username okay. Mr. Username okay. Are you sober? If you're sober, I will happily talk to you about the VA and the United States government. If you are drunk or varying degrees of fucked up, I would prefer not, and I would prefer you to be sober for that conversation in the future. I will happily have that conversation with you, but conversations with people who are uh, inebriated are difficult, to say the very least. Um, as sober as I am. Okay. You better be. Get into voice chat. <laughs> Kavas also post crazy shit and chaotic mess. It fuels me. Um, he he thinks you're drunk. Oh lord, <laughs> it's been a lot of years since I've been drunk. Why am I being? Where am I being tagged? <laughs> Fuck it, eh? <laughs> Wither. Uh All right, get into voice chat. Um, let's see. Oh, you'll be on mobile. All right, cool, cool, non-binary. Oh, that was um, surprisingly wholesome. Especially how I started the stream. You would come into Discord, you would go to voice chat, I would then right click your name and move you to on air, and then you would be on the air with me. This is all you have to do. I've, I have done the best I can do to guide you. Yeah, I'm pressing X on the sobriety as well. Ugh. It's not, as, it's not as fucking obvious like when I press the X on this one. Fucking, this controller doesn't have the, the, the classic X on it. I should, I should just keep the, keep the other one around. So, like, there's, there's the, cl uh, the classic X. Uh, oh. Voss. <laughs> oh, all right. So, yeah, I don't think there's any news we need to cover. We covered the um, we covered what we needed to cover at the top of the the top of the stream. Um Hey, there's Hazzy. He's great. I'm telling you, it's the best fucking thing I've done for a while. Ah, uh, fucking and caboose. Caboose contributed the the the, the image. The, the 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 Photoshop is caboose, and then fucking me animating. Love it. Um, ye, you saving up for Alex Jones? What's a two hole? That was that was Hazzy two holes. That was it right there. That's Haz. 
Taz is a streamer, and he thinks women have two Ladies holes. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Oh. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now... I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Ah, okay, cool, cool. Uh, what a two hole. Got it. All right. Um, all right, there's that. Sort of some music on in the background while I wait. Oh, Lord. We'll have a good conversation, though. Well, Shoeless, uh, one, I've had to listen to it many, many times. But two, I wrote the script for it. <laughs> so I was I was I was sort of there for, <laughs> for its creation. Um, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I that's that's. Uh, really curious what the third hole he left out. He left out the uh, urethra uh, donger. He thinks he was thinking asshole vagina. He he didn't he didn't understand where the pee comes from. Yeah, that that's 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 the mistake has made. And then he took on Twitter, of course, and argued that w it was a feminist conspiracy against him, and they were making up a hole. He's so dumb. <laughs> He's so dumb. How do I deal with the fact that I feel the need of maximizing my own earning potential is justified even if excessive? I believe I can make a difference for other people and my intent is to help others isn't still inherently bad. No, Theo, it's not inherently bad, but you still have to uh, uh, understand. Remember, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. You have to square that with your own ethical framework, that, that the, the system in which you operate is inherently unethical, but you can operate ethically within your own framework. But you have to square that for yourself. The first step, Theo, is to understand, is to differentiate between the, the traditions, the ideas, the ideologies that are given to you by society and the ones that you build and choose for yourself. Once you draw that line for yourself and you start to separate those two and you start, start to demarcate them, that's where you can start to build your own ethical framework. And as long as you understand that the capitalist framework is inherently unethical. That's what's giving you that feeling in the pit of your stomach is because you know this is fucked. This is fucked. But if you can do things to rectify it, if you can do things to turn that, and as long as your earning potential, where you're deriving that income from, if you can minimize the harm and impact that that source has on the world, then you start to feel better about it. You start to square it for yourself, right? That's that's where you you need to work with and on. Um Yeah, yeah, that fucking yeah, has thought they peed out of their vagina. I swear to god, he was he's so fucking dumb. Oh, he's astoundingly dumb. All right. Um, well, then I think that soapy box person. Uh, but Kai, that's idealism. My ethics come from material dialectic. <laughs> That sounds like a hypothetical to me. That's that's anti-material, uh, fucking an, uh, anti-scientific materialism. Um. Oh, Caleb, it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was actually a really great conversation, Caleb. Um, it was it was top tier. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um. 
fucking uh yeah that soapy box person whoever it was that was really fucking eager to get in on that conversation i don't think they're here anymore are they oh let me check all the user list um no they're not here anymore um so hey cow poker um yeah Oh, dude, I'd be I'd be happy to call the fucking stream at that. Um, I'd be I'd be perfectly happy to end the stream on that on that fucking foot. That was that was a solid fucking footing to end on, <laughs> one way or the other. If y'all want to keep this rolling, that's fine with me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that would I'm perfectly happy. One good piece of praxis. That that for me. One mind changed. That's a win in my book. Uh, no, uh, VA as in the Veterans Administration, Shulis, I believe. Um, I don't know for certain, but I do believe it's the v, uh, the Veterans Administration that he's referring to. Um, so, yes, the the organization, the United States governmental organization responsible for, yeah, okay, it sucks, yeah, responsible for administering the veterans' uh, benefits healthcare, and various affairs having to do with the people that we've run through the meat grinder. Um, yeah. So, it's a shit show. Like all things of the United States government, it's a shit show, right? Like, it's not... Like, like we want to take care of the people we run, ran through the military. Are you kidding me? We want to forget about them as soon as they come back. That's why, like, a significant proportion, a disproportionate percentage of the homeless population in the U.S., is former military um, because, again, we just want to sweep them under the rug and not really think about them too much uh, after they come back because that's, you know, that's a little much for us. Uh, what do I got? I still love that photo of Vitaly Klitschko fucking training up. Oh, what's going on in Ukraine? Uh, what's going on in Ukraine is uh, fucking Vladimir Putin is having to... <laughs> um, Vladimir Putin is basically facing a demographical collapse of the Russian Federation after um, a population decrease as well as the elimination of the Soviet apprenticeship journeyman program that was responsible for the creation and maintenance of uh, the majority of people who maintained the infrastructure of the uh, of what is now the Russian Federation and what used to be the Soviet bloc. Uh, in the face of a um his uh cr his vanguard a vanguardistic crony group fleecing the nation for untold amounts probably in the trillions so he's got a twofold agenda basically the demographical collapse is going to lead to an infrastructure program which is going to necessitate easy access to shipping ports and that sort of thing so they need ready access to the black sea the ukraine is the easy uh, ukraine is the easiest access to the black sea so they're attempting to do an expansionist land grab out to the black sea across uh, across ukraine there's a couple of oil pipelines coming uh, gas pipelines that come into play in this conversation as well on the flip side of that he and his buddies have basically stolen an insane amount from the Russian Federation. So he's facing the uh, the dictator's dilemma. Um, if he doesn't secure his power and his legacy and install a replacement who will leave him the fuck alone and protect him, then he faces what every dictator faces, being drawn and quartered or stabbed in the ass to death sort of situation. So he's playing both of these fronts. So he's using nationalistic uh, saber rattling on one hand and also an expansionist land grab on the other yeah there's some nato pressure but honestly most of this is being driven via putin because of these factors that he's facing um so that's what's happening in ukraine so the russian federation is amassing military on the border of ukraine and various uh, uh various uh european nations are responding the u.s is responding sort of but we really don't want a huge part of this one it's not really in our best interest to get involved too heavily in this one 
Um, so we're kind of like arms lengthening this one to a certain degree. Uh, but you will see more of a militaristic response from the various European nations. I mean, you're seeing like Estonia, uh, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Spain. I think Portugal got some people in. The UK threw some special forces in. Um, I forget who else has dropped some shit. Um, various, various other countries. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, who is Joey? Just Joey. Uh, it's Mr. Username. Okay. He pulled it off. Good night with her. Wait, is Wither going to bed? Yeah, I have things to do too. Yep. Good night with her. Um, No, Theo, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, Theo. It really doesn't. But I, I, I stay in touch, Theo, and I think I honestly, Theo, I think we can help you. I think we can add some insight to your life. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna need you to oh, count to five so I can get your audio check done, please and thank you. Alright, sorry, I I have done. My name's Joe. Sorry. <laughs> Count to five for me, please, and thank you. Um, so I can do your audio check. How, how do I mute? Okay. I got it. I'm still here, so. Audio check, one, two. Count to five for me, please. One, two, three, four, five. All right. All right, I like you. You're a good dude. I like you. So, I wanted to talk to you. How's that sobriety going for you, Joey? Not well. <laughs> no. Not well. So, I just wanted to talk to somebody. So. And you're you're a nice guy, so thank you kindly. Um, you got a, you got a good following, and uh, Trent is one of the guys that he got me one of those. Uh, anyways, he's a good guy, so I'm willing to discord with you. Um. So, what did you do in the military? Uh, I was a lum bravo. Uh, National Guard. Okay. Um, <laughs> Foss. Um, so that's... Okay, so you're National Guard. I was going to say 11 Bravo's Army, right? Army National? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Um, so a anything in particular you did or you just uh, uh, like infantry? Uh, it was just infantry. Fair enough. Um, so how bad they fuck you over, my man? Would you would you come out of the service with? What's 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 the jacket look like? How bad they fuck you up? Um, I liked it when I first got out. You know, like it was just like you know, like yeah, everybody gets it. You know, and then I started to want to be a cop. No, it's not cool. <laughs> so what? Uh, how how's the how's the VA bone in you? Uh, they're giving me in like uh, money, <laughs> and then uh, I'm fucked. And we get I get a thousand dollars a month. So, are you full disability? No, I am not. And, uh, I'm having issues at my current job, and I think it's maybe me, you know. Type of thing, no. And I'm sure the VA helps is is very quick to get you access to the help you need, and you know, for a, a therapist to talk to. And, no, they're not. I've, yeah. I've been asking for them for a therapist for about ten years. It's bullshit. <laughs> like, how long you been out? Ten years. Oh, 
10 years. Jeez. So were you, wait, 10 years. Okay. Yeah. I have to like square the timeline. So you were like the like second wave over. Like, yeah. I was like, in 2009 to 2010 in Iraq. Yeah. So yeah. That, Those last combat tours in Iraq. Yeah. So fucking, yeah, that's, yeah, that's when we started sending National Guard abroad and shit. We're like, what the fuck are we doing? Well, you, you, you realize that National Guard goes all over. Yeah, which wasn't so we, the we, original intent, but, you know, it's definitely how we use I, them. In National Guard, I went to Katrina, too. Right, that's you know. that's at least a worthwhile use. Um, I'm not, not, <laughs> I went there, there is combat arms. I didn't go there as like a lot of people don't realize that Katrina was fucked for us because we went there as combat arms, not as like aid mission. Out not shit. A, yeah, not aid mission. You know that, right? Yeah. All right, um, good. I I didn't realize a lot of people. Um, but however, like Chris Kyle shit on the fucking goddamn. You hear about that shit? He's like, oh, he's he's on top of the fucking goddamn. No, it didn't happen. Yeah, no, he, he yeah, uh, Jesse Ventura, right? Fucking basically tore him a new one, and then well, had, and then he, had to go to court over Jesse, it. Jesse Ventura, yeah. he, he he just like Jesse like Jesse Ventura was like, "What the fuck? Why are you coming after me?" Yeah, and you were not on the fucking what is it, the dome or whatever. Yeah, and I can I can vouch, hey, that motherfucker wasn't on the dome. We well, we, like, we know he we was, were we, know he we was were a liar. we were fucking like we were kicking down doors, but we were kicking down doors, and we were like we we're trying to help people. And you know what we're trying to help people means getting the fuck out. And then some guys didn't want to leave, so we gave them shit, so they didn't leave. <laughs> like, Bricks, take care of yourself. Um, so let's see. So you've been out for ten years. Um. What what are what are what are they? How do they drag their feet on getting you access to uh, a therapist? What 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 does that look like from your side of the aisle? What, what? Saw a therapist two times in my life. So and it was only to rate me. So so like you how how do you you put in a request with your doctor uh, or uh, at the VA or your representative at the VA? And say, I, I, I want to talk to somebody. I, I need to see a therapist. Like, what's the runaround look like on that? So I saw a therapist twice in my life. And it was only to rate me. Have you so. have you asked? Uh, have you asked for, like, follow ups? Yes, of course. Yeah, no shit. I've asked for help. And even the therapist there was like, hey, listen, there's things that we can do and to like uh some weird fucking shit like uh mine like not mine but like visual sh stuff they can do i asked my uh therapist and they're like no it's uh not what we can, what we can do so. and I mean, therapy is expensive, but have you considered trying to find somebody? What, what part of the country? Are you yes, in? now, now, now I am. Yes, yes, now I am, because I work in a job that I want, and I love. I'm not gonna tell you my job. That's fair. But I'm a, I'm an IT guy. Fair. I love it to death, and I don't want to lose it. I'm at the verge of losing it, but I'm I am asking for help more more help i guess Does that makes sense um apparently multiple people in chat are offering to help in a variety of ways um, yeah of course they always want to help in a variety of ways they can't help well i mean it, it, you have to understand i'm a combat vet like it's it's just, it's different for us it's like we're we're this little like specimen, you know. <laughs> like we're these little guys, like these little guys, you know. We didn't want much in life. I don't know how many guys you got coming around combat vets, but Mom. I didn't want nothing in life. I just wanted to be okay, you know. I wanted to provide for my family. My partner of many years, 
Um, he was a network administrator, a systems admin for the Air Force, and he was helping set up a forward operating base. And he and four men under his command were pulling cable for the comm system. And as I understand, he, yeah, I understand. That. As he described it, he was putting a one of the VoIP phones. He was just putting a phone on a desk, and he reached under the desk, and then there was a large cacophony, a large noise, um, and blinding light. And when he, I, I, you when, know, by the way, I've been following you for a while. Thank you. I'm sorry. When he, when he, and you're a good guy. When he you're got, when he got up, the four men under his command were no longer alive and that's what he came back uh, home. that's what he came oh, back home with he was just an yeah. it guy who went over and served his country and came back with a cte a con- you know concussion of brain injury yeah. and um and the the knowledge and the 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 images of four of his buddies lying in front of him pretty fucked up. So while I personally I have no I experience from your side of the aisle, I, I, I have cared about and for people who do have that experience. You know, my, I'm very grateful for people like you. Um, yes, Cassidy, that is true. The, the death saved his life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, sh- sure, Karina. Yeah, we can we can do that. Um, so, what what step? Because okay, so you're you're combat, right? Like this is this is steps, right? You do things. You fucking you get up. You square. Right. You square your. You, I, was, I was just guy. Well, yeah, you you, you, guy. Square, uh, you, you square know, your, you square your gear. I was just a guy. You know, I was just a guy. Exactly. But you square your gear and you get on with it, right? Like that's, you get on with your day and you do the job at hand, right? That's just, just what you fucking yeah, do day. to get by. Every day, all day. <laughs> exactly. So what about that? How are you going to do that about straightening your life, uh, straightening your life out? Because you know you can't keep oh, going no, on like this, right? Fuck. Well, you can't go. Yeah. You can't keep going on like this, right? You you want that fucking job. You like that fucking job, and you you're gonna have to do things to change your life to square it away. So I actually reached out to my aunt. I said, you know, I just want to help you out, like whatever you're doing. And then I reached out to guys in Saudi. I said, yeah, let's, let's uh, can let's I be family? Can I ask like you a personal you. question? Yes, sir. Yes. How many times a night do you um, do you get drunk? Um, been uh, a lot lately, but uh, four times a week. So it half the week or more. Um, yes. probably not. Probably not sustainable, huh? Probably can't keep going that way, right? Well, yes, I agree with you. So, I mean, and I, and I, it kind of, I shouldn't have. God damn it! <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, but yeah, dude, yeah, I get it. Humans, you do what you do to to fucking keep going, right? To survive, to make it manageable, to tolerate it for the just to shut that shit up. You know, I get it. Um, but it's not going to be sustainable long term, and that's not how you get the mission done, is it? Of course not. Yeah. So, I mean, look, you're not the first fuck uh, you're you are not the first uh former soldier to come on my air like hammered. Well, I felt I felt like I guess should have because you're uh on like you on you're a gay guy. Yes. Uh, yes. And that's very important for soldiers. Why? Didn't realize that. Um unfortunately. It's uh It's uh, something we don't like, so. Yeah, <laughs> y'all are some of the gayest fuckers on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are, but not like in the sense of. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking gay boys play a paradise in the fucking service as long as they don't think you're actually gay. 
Um, let's, 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 let me tell you something. There's a, there's a thing, a camaraderie, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a brotherhood. Yeah, and I knew a lot of guys that I served with were gay. It's a brotherhood. They're, yeah, and I'd fucking die for them, no matter what. But they, it's, I guess it's, like, different? I don't know. Uh, it's just we have a we have a, a founding member on this channel. It's, it goes by the name of Squee. First time yeah. I first time I met Squee came on the air and screamed bloody murder. I'm I'm also I'm also Arabic by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> no, 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 but I got a lot of MVG guys like reach yeah. out to me like, and they help me out. Is with that the, my my Arabic? It I. I recently just like fucking just got rid of Discord altogether. And then I saw you like streaming, and I wanted to I wanted to reach out to you. So, I, I don't know. I, I I like you. I've always liked like I watch you, so like I want like you're open. So I well, thank you. That makes sense. I I and I want the best for you, and the best for you isn't the path you're walking, is it? I mean, the path I'm walking is I'll be a fucking IT guy for the rest of my life. Which is fine. I mean, I'll tell you right now, most IT guys ended up end up burning out and raising chickens in Montana or some shit, like a few of my buddies have. Hey, I like, my, I like chickens. Hey, so. and it's a perfectly viable thing. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about, and you know it. You've got an un- what do you mean? you've got an unhealthy coping mechanism that you're using to deal with some shit that is some heavy shit that like average the average person on the street couldn't even begin to comprehend. And it's 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 gonna get to you eventually, and it's you know you you're gonna have to deal with it, my man. You're gonna have to deal with it, and you know you're gonna have to deal with it. Tell me what it is. You saw some shit and did some shit and lived the, yeah, life, I, I, lived I the saw life. an accident. I saw an accident. Um, and uh, I saw a lot of people die. Yeah. And the human, and they, up. The human uh, psyche is not <laughs> ready for that usually. That's, that's a fucked up thing to see. Um, and I wanted to talk to you because I like your stream. And I don't think you realize that, but I, I do really like your stream. A lot of it's is important. Well, thank you. You know, and you're a, you're a open person. You know, I wish I what I really want. I gotta tell you, I, what I really want is to have this conversation with you sometime in the future. Where one, you're not only sober, but two, you don't feel the need to drink to cope with the shit that you have to deal with. I think that would be great. I think that would be fucking baller as shit to get to know that version of you. You'll, you'll never get to know that guy. You say never. I'm an idealist. I I have to. I, <laughs> You're an idealist. <laughs> I have I have to hope that I get to know that version of you. And you know what? Yeah, I want to I want to get to know you too. You're a good guy. Thank but uh, but I want like uh, the people to know the VA is yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we treat our we, tra- it, we treat our former soldiers like, like crap. In uh, this that, that was the point. Like I wanted to, like get across is like I been through the I've been for 10 years I've been through this shit I I just wanted to see a psychiatrist and help me and guess what happens yeah. they fucking get you the, the vet tanner they get you this shit and all this shit only thing that matters is your rating and all right, that's awesome, Joe. You got a sixty percent rating. You're like, what the fuck? I don't. I didn't want a rating to begin with. I wanted to be like whole. You know. 
That's what they do. They they give you ratings. That's 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 what our soldiers come back to. And that's all they get is ratings. Yeah. It's completely it's, it's completely inhumane. No, it's yeah, it's beyond humane. It's <laughs> fucking slavery. Yeah. Fucking hate it. Don't tell nobody. But uh, <laughs> It, it's just it'll it should be just between you and I, uh, and your seven. Uh, yeah, don't worry. But, about uh, it. It's this what they're gonna do? They're gonna like have a lot of guys that want to join. I was like, <laughs> I'll join, bro. <laughs> be a cop or something. Don't be a cop. Yeah, well, I'd rather be a cop than a military guy. <laughs> I would rather neither, please. Uh, oh, yeah. But, Joey, I think I'm going to actually, I'm going to pull, not a, not just this conversation, but I think it's, I get it. it's, I get it. it's I late. I, I want to wrap this stream up either way, so. I completely understand. Um, dude, I You're really, great guy. I really do wish you the best and like speak up and in, speak up in community and if seriously, like reach out, there's multiple people in chat who are willing to help in a variety don't, of ways. Hey, if, if I can reach anybody in chat, don't let your fucking rating define you. And then your rating matters. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what you get. So. That's what they want from you. Is your goddamn rating. Drink some water, right. Joey. Drink some water. All right. I love you too. Bye. <laughs> love you, man. Oh. I. Uh. Burpy burp. Burpy burp. Oh. Let's see. Where is the thingy? Uh, who's does anybody know who's who's kicking around? Who's kicking around? Oh, for sure we're doing that. For sure we're doing that. I caboose. I I yeah. Viva. Total praxis. Total praxis. Total praxis. Um, we're going to raid public loser. Let's go say hi to public. Yeah, exactly. Two practice, two times practice in one stream. I honestly, I couldn't feel any better about this stream. I started this stream cursing somebody's name and shitting on libs for all that they do wrong. And I got to open somebody's mind and expose them to new ways of thinking and bring them into the community and i got to speak to and touch uh, a human being who is in need at this moment you joey take care of yourself man seriously stick around say hi from time to time speak up don't be a lurker we, we really do love you my man um everybody else tomorrow is friday friday is bad movie night and bad new movie night Ah, oh, is the cathartic release after a week of bullshit. You all know Kai looks forward to it. So, yeah. Yeah, this has been a really good fucking stream. Everyone, take care of yourself. Love yourself. You have but the moment. <laughs>